whether they are called novel oral anticoagulants or as they're trying to move to now in the US in, in many cases, direct oral anticoagulants. They are certainly still a hot topic at uh, meetings such as the American Heart Association. And I'm talking with uh, Conchetta Crivera, who is a PharmD and an MPH and a director within Janssen. And we're talking costs here. There's a presentation at this meeting and we're talking about costs of rivaroxaban compared to warfarin, correct? That's correct. So th this is a pretty large study, what, 4,500 patients? Yeah, we looked at 4,500 patients using the Imanit database, which includes commercial and Medicare insurance members. And uh, we look longitudinally. So, we, so we, these are new start rivaroxaban patients. And, and we took a look at, at longitudinally at their total cost of care, which we feel is really a contribution to the literature because of the fact that recently published uh, Rivaroxaban data has really just shown about the hospital costs, kind of isolating that. Right. But we, what we decided to do was look at the total cost, include the cost of warfarin, which is pennies, include the cost of Rivaroxaban, you know, and really take a look at what's the total overall cost when you look holistically at outpatient, inpatient, ER, and then the oh, pharmacy okay. costs. And what did you find? We found that when you include the pharmacy costs, we actually found we, when you're looking at all cause and AF related that it's comparable between Riva and Warfarin. So that is the, that is really the take home message and very exciting um, when we're comparing an agent which is a newer factor 10A oral anticoagulant compared to a generic Warfarin. So what is this going to tell us in terms of more widespread use. You know, for a while there was a concern that it wasn't being adopted fast enough. These new agents weren't being adopted fast enough in the United States. Now it does look like mm -hmm. they're starting to move, correct? Yeah. So there's, there's been misconceptions that, you know, warfarin the pennies a day, but what we really need to, and this study shows this in the real world setting, looking at, at, at hospital, pharmacy claims, medical claims, across the spectrum of patients that you really need to take the entire healthcare landscape. You should really look at hospital costs. You should look at outpatient visits because it all makes a contribution at the end into the total overall cost of care. So what else are you gonna be doing? Are you following this up and doing more uh, analyses? Well, yeah, so Janssen is, is really, good. we're gonna be publishing this data and we have a commitment to real world effectiveness, real world data, looking at these claims databases and really bring forth uh, you know, research questions on the economics and studying of these drugs. Well, for all of the, uh, the last couple of years, we've been talking so much about costs and so it's really nice to hear some positive news and some encouraging news about one of the newer agents. Yeah, we're very exciting, and this is a contribution to the literature. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we have a variety of coverage from CardioSource World News and the American Heart Association meetings, so please look for our cover story and uh, other videos here at YouTube and across Jack.